Listen, tell me what farmer is going to plant a garden and then hope it dries up. They're in one on earth that's going to do that. They don't plant it for it to dry up. They plant it for it to prosper. And that becomes a mindset that we must have in everything that we do. doesn't matter what you do. doesn't ha- matter how menial it is. If you're doing it and asking the Spirit of God to cause your hand to multiply, somewhere down the line it's going to multiply. That's, what, that's how faith works. And then first the ark has to proceed. I've got to have some way where I develop a prototype so people can see the movement of it. This is for Alabama. Some way I have to develop a prototype so people can see how it's moving. That's the art. Remember, they had the cloud, they had the fire, they had had that for 40 years, and all of a sudden, this is how a new era works. All of a sudden, God removed it. Well, think about if you'd walk, been walking one way with the fire and cloud, and all of a sudden, you wake up the next morning, and it's gone. And then the Lord says, the only way you're going to get into the promise is look at that box And it's going to have to be 3,000 cubic feet down there. And you're going to have to give it space to move because you don't know what I'm doing fully and you don't know how it's going to move fully. And if you'll do that before long, you'll be caught up with it. You'll be moving with it. And before long... Any time you come into the enemy's camp, it'll turn over everything in that camp. That's what the glory of God does. And so, and then he has a government about him. I was telling uh, uh, the judge this morning, uh, Israel's biggest problem over the three Pentecosts ago, going into the fourth year now, They have not been able to get their government back in place. And the Lord, in every book I've ever written, I've said, you watch Israel, and once you see what's happening there, you see what's happening in God's kingdom. Until we get our government in place in God's order. He didn't choose first pastors. They don't have the gift mix. That apostles have. Apostles are warring, governing, sending, finishing. God made them that way. And all those gifts are needed, but God has an order in his gifts. He says it right there in 1 Corinthians chapter 12. And he says, once you have first apostles, second prophets... Just back to the tribe mentality. Third teachers. All of a sudden, the miracle workers will be released to come forth. That's what really is the new harvest call. The miracle workers and the healers start being released. Some, we're going to find entire generations set in church without being released. When those gifts sat there dormant without being released and many of us died. Now hear me. And some of you know that's the gift in you, so you need to be crying out for God's order to fall in place so your gift gets released. All of a sudden, there's there's this intersection of time, place, heaven, and earth. 
And because of that, there are certain blessings that get released to us. See, also, Pentecost is a first fruit feast. And in the midst of the first fruit feast, there's a Rosh Kadesh first fruit moment that occurs in the month. Again, it is not about us just getting pinpointed on legalistically our watch. It's saying, now, I've got to be very aware this month, there is a moment that as I bring a portion of myself that God gave me this month and present it to him, all of a sudden, at that divine intersection, something happens. That's how the Bible works. See, first fruits each month always reminds me that God is the source of everything I have. And he says over in Romans, this isn't Old Testament, if at first fruits I'll bring him the best of my lump, he will bless all the rest of my lump. Well, I've got a bunch of kids and grandkids who are lumpy. So I'm going to be sure I bring him the best so he can bless the rest. I've got a bunch of people that just like you, that we gather together and a bunch of them have lots of lumps on them. So I'm going to bring him my best portion of my lump so he can take care of their lumps. See, that's been a part of my life since Holy Spirit found me and manifested who he was to me starting when I was 18. That's Pentecost. And yet, I have to have moments where Holy Spirit comes again, baptizes me again. All that means is He begins to flow out of you, and it's like a river that overwhelms you. See, first fruits, by doing that each month, I gain confidence before the Lord. That's the faith word of the Old Testament. I, I walk in confidence. I'm right with Him. Not that I don't ever make mistakes. I'm just right with Him. And then you find out all of a sudden, every month when I wave that first fruit before the Lord, I know that eventually... He is going to, he's, he's moving me from waving to watching and gathering. And eventually there comes a full manifestation of my promise. See, that's a walk with the Lord that he requires of us. Thank you, Chad, for helping me. Now, we have entered now. The next Pentecost season. We've entered the next Savan first fruit month. And I have not been able to participate in that in fullness anywhere. You know why? God wanted me to do it in Alabama, the state He showed me that comes into the fullness of his glory. They're doing it back in Corinth today, but it's not the place that he wanted me to do it in because there's a different glory realm that he's going to take me into. 